Okay, see here, on the left you have Nord 3 and on the right you have Nord 4. And if you look closely, the Nord 4 has app markets, bubble pop, candy crush, etc. And I'll get straight to the point. As we predicted about two years ago, I feel Oxygen OS will be totally removed from OnePlus series. There's no ads and recommendation in Oxygen OS yet. And now we have been using the Nord 4 for two to three days now. And after using this phone, I believe this is the best OnePlus launch in a long time, but OnePlus has changed. Now you might think how? Well, stick around till the end of the video. This is a very interesting one. Let's go. Now we'll not be going through normal unboxing. It is what it is. This is what you get in the box. This is a proper review and we put up a community post because we wanted to know what question do you guys have. So we'll be comparing it with other devices and answering your questions throughout the video wherever possible. And if you like this format, do like the video. The team is working really hard for this sale time. So we can help you guys make wiser purchases. Now, coming back to the phone, since the start, OnePlus Nord is a different series. And Nord started because... Like, we finally feel like there's an opening for us to take our flagship experience into a new price category. And then Kalpe left and started his own brand Nothing. But we always expect the OnePlus Nord series to bring the best specs or the flagship experience at an aggressive price while maintaining the Oxygen OS clean software which OnePlus is known for. Now just remember this part, we'll come back to it later. And before we get to the cons of the phone, here's what I really liked about the Nord 4. So it comes in this two-tone finish, like the major of the lower body is metal and the up is glass. It has this unibody metallic finish, like brand stopped making metal back due to network issues. But this metal back after a long time feels refreshing. And it has an alert slider with this orange finish at the back. And I'm surprised how OnePlus changed the design for the Nord 4 because we got a chance to get our hands on the Chinese variant of the Nord 4 and if you see, the Chinese version of Nord 4 was very similar to the original iconic Nord 1. But with the global variant of Nord 4, they went all out and completely changed the design. And if you look here, it looks quite similar to the Pixel 3's two-tone design. Honestly, this looks very good and it really stands out when you're using the phone in a crowded public place. So from a design perspective, OnePlus has changed in a good way. Now, the display on the Nord 4 is good specs-wise, but there was a weird thing that we noticed. Like, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but when we booted up the device first, it's not looking sharp and all of that. Even we were confused. But if you go to screen resolution and display settings, see you get this adaptive details enhancement. You can turn this off and it gets better. Also, by default, the resolution is set to standard. So if you want the sharpest display resolution, switch to the high mode. These settings fixed the problem a little bit and it looked better than how it looked earlier. But somehow, the text in the notification center didn't appear sharp. If you see here, the camera is not able to capture the same thing, but in real life, the text don't look sharp enough for some reason. Maybe this can be fixed via a software update, but this is a bug that we noticed every single day in our testing. Also, people said that the colors on the screen looked dull. And to check that out, we watched Maharaja on Netflix and the movie watching experience here is good, like the picture clarity and colors and all of it seemed good to us. Somehow it might not show on camera. And FYI, it doesn't have HDR support on Netflix. By the way, movie and display, both are very good, must watch. Joke aside, the display can go up to 2150 nits peak brightness. But you can see the display doesn't look bright enough outdoors because the HBM number is 1100 nits. And this is the number that you should look for, not peak brightness. Now, there might be some issues with the display in terms of sharpness, but in terms of performance, there are no issues here. Now, there were a bunch of questions on how is Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 different from 8S Gen 3? And is Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 an upgrade over 7 Gen 3? Now, Smartphone processor naming is confusing, but see, I'll make it simple for you guys. If you see plus between a processor name, it is an upgrade from the previous version and S is mostly a toned down version. Like for example, 7 plus Gen 3 is an upgrade over 7 Gen 3 and 8 as Gen 3 is a toned down version of 8 Gen 3. Concentrate on the plus and S. Now, the Nord comes in 128 GB variant with UFS 3.1 storage and the 250 GB variant here comes with UFS 4.0 storage. Thank God, there's no typo this time from OnePlus. Now, a lot of questions were on heating and especially since it is a metal bag, does it feel hot frequently? Well, we ran the Android 2 benchmark and if you see here, it scored around 11.5 lakhs, which is slightly lower than the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3, which is there on the Poco F6 and Xiaomi 14 CV, etc. Now, especially for the Nord 4, we ran the test two times more to see if the phone feels hot. But if you see, it's the heat is manageable and it's pretty normal. And even the CPU throttling test, if you see, the graph is all green. It's as green as you guys. No matter what people tell you, you are a green flag. But then again, these are benchmarks. What about real life scenario? We now use our phones to edit videos for stories, reels and all of that. So we took a 4K video, applied a color grade and a graphic overlay. And if you see side by side with the Poco F6, which has Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 and Motorola Edge 50 Fusion, which has 7 Gen 3. And now we'll hit on export on all the three phones at the same time. 
and see the Poco does it the fastest followed by Nord 4 followed by H50 Pro and we did this test multiple times and every single time the result is the same. So from this particular test we can conclude that Snapdragon 8s Gen 3 is greater than 7 plus Gen 3 which is greater than 7 Gen 3. Mystery. Solved. Now the OnePlus Nord phones always had a problem of FPS drops in game. So we played Call of Duty on this for about 40 to 45 minutes. You can play at low graphics at an ultra frame rate which is 90 FPS here. The gameplay is smooth, there was no lag or frame drops. Plus you get this game mode where you get the option to turn on 4D vibration, block calls while gaming etc. So that there are no disturbance during your gaming sesh with your boys. So overall from the performance point of view, I think the OnePlus Nord 4 here does a good job for the price. And as of now, we haven't found any unnecessary heating issues like the Nord 3. And Prince asked us straight to the point, camera good or not? Well, usually I don't have high hopes for OnePlus phones in terms of camera. Like it has decent camera specs. The main camera sensor is a downgrade from last year, but it's good to see that there's no two megapixel BS on the Nord 4. And in videos, it can record in 4K 60 FPS via the main camera. Like normally in proper sunlight, the photos come out good, but the colors are not consistent. Like see this photo, the colors are sometimes dull and sometimes they are bright. The portrait images are also okay, but the portrait cutout and edge detection is a hit or miss at times. But overall, I would say the camera is okay-ish for the price. On the front, you get a 16 megapixel selfie camera that can only record in 1080p 30fps. I mean, in 2024, in this price range, 4K video recording on the front camera is a norm. So, that was expected. And the selfies from it are average. The skin tone can be better. So, overall, to be honest, I didn't have much expectation in cameras from OnePlus phone. It's just that they need to fine-tune the skin tone and the HDR in their photos, which will immediately make their cameras better by 30 to 40%. And talking about fine-tuning, I remember Oxygen OS. The software, I hope it can be fine-tuned like how it was back in the OG Oxygen OS days. It is running on the latest Android 14 out of the box based on Oxygen OS 14.1. And OnePlus here has, guess, guess, artificial intelligence? The wrong OnePlus intelligence. I'm not saying it, you can see on the Nord 4 website. And let me show you what OnePlus intelligence can do. Like I'll open an article in Google Chrome and I'll swipe on the sidebar and see I have the option of summarizing the article. And not just Google Chrome, it works in pretty much any web browser you have on your phone. So unlike Galaxy AI, where the article summary only works in Samsung internet browser, it's good that they are not limiting it to their own browser. And if the mountains are calling you, all you need to do is open your mail and swipe open the writing assistant. I'll write a single line about how I want to take a leave as the mountains are calling me. So see here, it understood the reference of mountains calling me and it generated a leave email that I can simply copy and paste and send it to the HR. Smooth AI, why smooth? Now here, I would take a moment and appreciate OnePlus and Oppo for making usable AI features and they do work in every app. It's not just limited to their own apps. Also, you get the AI eraser here. We have tried it multiple times with multiple photos and it works really well. And just like the Oppo Reno 12 series, it has beacon link. So see, I've turned off Wi-Fi and internet and it has no SIM card on the Nord 4. And our Shobik Da has the Reno 12 Pro with no SIM and no internet. Now I'll select the Reno 12 Pro here and see, I can call anyone without SIM and internet. So Shobik speak one line, uh, tell me what what are your thoughts on software of OnePlus Nord 4? My thoughts on the software of Nord 4 is software is 5 by 10, uh, not recommended to the OG Oxygen OS user. Since he is on the same floor, I can make out that when he speaks and when I get the audio, there is a split lag of about 5 seconds. But in emergency scenarios, it works pretty good. It's like walkie talkie. So Beacon Link uses Bluetooth to make calls and it works up to 300 meters of range. Also currently it only works on Oppo Reno 12 series and Nord 4. Now the software feature aside, like Oxygen OS has a good side and a dark side. But the dark side starts here. See, you get almost 12 bloatware apps and out of it, I found Netflix, Spotify and LinkedIn to be usable apps. And I agree with you guys, bloatware is fine. For a power user, you can always uninstall them. But it doesn't stop there. You have these hot apps and hot games, which you can disable, I understand. Then there's also OnePlus dedicated app store now called App Picks. It feels like a mixture of Oppo and Realme app store. In fact, even when you search apps, there are suggestions. If you search for an app on the home screen, there are even app ads. All of these ads and bloatware in the software really confuses me. Now, we said in the earlier part of the video to hold and remember this information. What was the OnePlus Nord series all about? Like, we finally feel like there's an opening for us to take our flagship experience into a new price category. And so OnePlus saw the Nord series as providing almost a flagship experience, but in the mid-range smartphone segment. And if you see the first Nord, it sold like hotcakes in India and it became the most selling smartphone. And if you see this part from our Nord 2 video, but if you're someone who wants a good software experience, you need a phone that looks good, more one-handed, 
Nord 2 is what you should go for. By the time Nord 2 came, Calpe had left OnePlus and after that, there was a base code merger with ColorOS and OxygenOS. In simple words, OxygenOS became ColorOS. And after that also, the Nord series was doing fine, but slowly OxygenOS was moving towards ColorOS and in 2024 with the Nord 4, we can finally say, Rest in peace to Oxygen OS. Now, only the name of Oxygen OS lives, but the soul of the Oxygen OS has died. It's a full transition to Color OS with bloatware, ads, App Store, everything. And it's not like this change is bad. Because if you see, the Nord 3 had launched for 33,000, but the Nord 4 starts from 30,000. So by adding bloatwares and all of that, it has reduced the cost. And no cap, I would say right from design to performance to software features, the Nord 4 is a solid device to consider. But then again, a major reason always have been to buy a OnePlus device was clean software. And more importantly, when Oxygen OS is done, what's the difference between this Iconeo 9 Pro or Poco F6 or Realme GT60? Realme GT60 is the same exact phone as Nord 4. And now it feels like more than ever, OnePlus is now equal to Realme. I mean, let that sink in. OnePlus is equal to Realme. Let us know what are your thoughts on this one. On that note, this is the signing off. See you pretty soon. And this is a colorful pew pew pew.